what kind of moron spends any of their life watching any of these dire films? They have made 10 Fast and Furious films since 2001. But what's odd about that is you don't meet anyone who has seen the latest Fast and Furious. Yet with each passing release, they keep making more and more and more money. Vin Diesel is printing dollars, or should I say his real name, Mark Sinclair. Pussy. This is my film degree, so you can trust whatever opinion that I form is the correct one. I am positively riddled with debt. Please consider subscribing to alleviate it somewhat. My hypothesis for such remarkable cinematic box office success is as follows. The films are actually good. The films are actually bad. The films are a money laundering scheme by Vin Diesel and it's just a click farm in India. I want to know how it went from an innocent car racer movie to saving planet Earth. This is not a natural transition. It's time to strap myself in, plug in the NOS and get watch car watching, carring, one of them. Driving. There we go. That's what you do in a car, isn't it, Karen? Drifting. Only in the third one though. What's up with this fool? What is he, sandwich crazy? The franchise starts off with this insanely cool lorry heist, which blows your mind because surely it's real. It, it drives under a lorry. Jesus Christ! But there's also a video of a man in real life actually doing it, so that's pretty fucking cool. Well done. There's the most early naughties house party ever, with just someone just casually shredding the guitar. <laughs> Someone playing the PlayStation because games are new and women kissing. <laughs> That's so naughty. The film is cars, women, cars, women, explosions, cars, women, Jerule. Jerule in a car talking to women. The final funny bit of this film is the most Looney Tunes arrest ever. One down, nine to go. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fresh. It's probably a really bad day to, to try and attempt this when I am uh, marginally hungover by accident. Family is important, but I'm also slightly concerned about the casual use of a homophobic slur. You get yourself a double cheese with fries for 2.95, fat I like the tuna here. Oh, come on. Mark Sinclair. I thought he was genuinely called Vin Diesel, but that now seems ridiculous to ever, ever believe that. Mr. Diesel. Hmm, probably not. Hey, uh, make sure you bring that body by the garage later, all right? So, you know, we can, we can work on that front end of yours. Sup, Gyaldem. Fancy showing me your mud flaps? That's horrible. Really, genuinely horrible to say out loud. We make it 15 minutes into the second film, and what in the men in black is this monstrosity? It looks like, like a ray gun. It's like some weird EMP gun which it stores the electrics in cars. I remember when Fast and Furious wasn't so ridiculous. When? I have a feeling we've all remembered these wrong because already in the saga, it's feeling a little bit too far-fetched. Boobs, boobs, more boobs. Fucking gnarly jet ski stunt. Ass. Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. Drop it, hell? I want to hear about this, homie. I said forget about it, cuz. Hey, hey. How Mr. Bean is this dancing, though? You got a pen? We've got the area blocked ahead. They've got nowhere to go. Absolutely incredible delivery from this woman right here. She nails her one line. So I checked her out on IMDb to see if her career went any further. And the following year, she ended up in Tom Cruise's Collateral as a co-pilot, which is a demotion, if anything, embarrassing. And she clearly thought so too, because after that, she never pretended to fly a helicopter ever again. Now this film does have what feels like an unrealistic jump as the finale. However, the behind the scenes shows us that they did actually launch 
a car. It didn't quite land in a real boat. It landed in a fake boat. However, it's it's pretty cool nonetheless, and I will allow it. And I am scared I am enjoying this franchise. It's 3 p.m. and my eyes are starting to really sting. I've been sitting in darkness despite being beautiful outside. I, I, I don't have a driver's license. And now I would like one. I want to drive around in cool neon cars, fighting drug lords, and being like, Oh, <laughs> whoa, I caramba. That's not what they said. That's not the humour. I'm losing my mind. The films already feel quite ridiculous already, and we're in the second one. I feel like the assumption is that Fast and Furious was never insane at the beginning. It, it is insane. It is literally already insane. And now it is time to watch... At the beginning of Tokyo Drift, we witnessed the perfectly normal American thing of having to attend high school via a metal detector. And then immediately after, one of the most unrealistic things Fast and Furious has ever put in front of our eyes. This guy's meant to be 18. He's in high school. This guy is not 18. He's got a five o'clock shadow and a hairline receding quicker than the coast of Great Britain. Now our poor main character Sean is exiled to Japan by his mother because he keeps bloody driving about everywhere and causing a ruckus. Oh, you're being a dickhead? Off to Japan, the world's coolest naughty step. Pre the chest hair on the fella, 18 years old. He's hiding a bloody raccoon under there. Now, I don't know about you, but for a first date, I probably wouldn't go on a death defying drift on a cliff edge. Even before we could drive, we'd cut class, sneak out, come up here and watch the older kids drift. <laughs> The film ends in a big street race with the nephew of a Yakuza boss, obviously. But there's no like gadgets, there's nothing absurd in this film. The biggest gadget is an iPod. And that's what people thought Fast and Furious should be. And they, that's what they thought it was at the beginning. That's what I wanted it to be. And I'm worried I don't like it. I'm worried I was wrong. Good God, I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the stupidest thing I've ever decided to do. I thought it'd be nice and fun and easy but I've just seen a cameo from Vin Diesel there at the end. I just didn't care about that film at all. I feel like people like it because of the song. I thought I liked it because of the song. Fast and Furious! Drift! 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 Fast and Furious! Drift! 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 But on, on, on the second watch, no. I just felt a bit, uh. But because I miss Vin Diesel so much, throughout that film I drew, I drew Vin Diesel himself. That's from the first film where he's He's running along the garden, evading bullets on all fours, uh, like the dog he is. It is currently five o'clock. I started this at 10 to 10 this morning. I've got seven more to go. God, please smite me down where I stand. Now, if I was coming up with a name for the fourth installment of my film franchise, I would probably also name it almost exactly the same as the first one. This is now Mission Impossible with cars, but I have an open mind. And within the first five minutes, it's no longer Fast and Furious. It actually might be Bollywood. Just a quick, a quick break. 30 minutes into Fast and Furious 2009. 2009, that's not, that's not what it's called, but that's... That's what it, the file's called that I have, may or may not have downloaded. I'm losing my mind, but I was on the down after Tokyo Drift, but now I'm boo, straight back up, boy. The CGI is absolutely abhorrent, and they've, they've, they've just brought it back in. It's all, all systems go, I'm back on it. I'm not fledging anymore. I'm losing my mind, but I'm not, I'm not in the danger zone. In a bad way, I'm in the day zone in a good way. Let's go, Dominic Toretto. Mr. Mark Sinclair himself. Vin Diesel is shot in the shoulder, which does absolutely nothing to him, of course, because it is nothing but a scratch to a man of that stature. There's also no exit wound, which is, you know, a big problemo. This film is actually all right so far. They're driving through the desert. There's a crash, a oosh, a whoppa, a smash. It's good. This film hasn't been too silly so far.
Ah, shit. Vin Diesel's just jumped horizontal. Directly horizontal. But if you look, if you look, look close enough, he actually just steps from one car directly to the other at about 160 miles an hour. And are legs that long? That feels out of proportion. I don't know. It might just be, you know, an optical illusion. He might have really long legs. He might be taller than Dwayne Johnson. He's not. But we'll get on to that. Okay, this is a big moment in the films. Vin Diesel's character has just avenged the death of his girlfriend. He has killed the person who killed his girlfriend. Vin Diesel needs to say something that will send shockwaves across entire movie watching generations. I am your father. Pussy. That was that was a highlight for me. That bit. Pussy. It was I actually quite enjoyed that one. It wasn't too far fetched. I feel health wise a little bit rejuvenated after having a stonking big Nando's double stodge bosh extra hot. And I'm ready to charge through into Fast Five. I'm fully, fully into the universe of. Dominic Toretto. I've already gone through the losing my mind stage and I've come back round, so I'm all good right now. It's it's good like movie watching time. The problem is, before the screening tomorrow, I've got five more. They're all probably gonna slowly go up in run time. Probably on average one hour 45. So that is, so probably about nine hours left. F fun, good fun. I've just clocked. It's two hours, 10 minutes. I'm not watching Hobbs and Shaw out of solidarity with Vin Diesel. There is only one acceptable bold man in this universe. This film literally continues from the exact same scene as the previous film. And there is an insanely cool bus roll, which is definitely real and fucking sick. But then they cut a hole in in the side of a moving train. Is, is that possible? A train's, American train's notoriously made out of koi for thin metal? I don't know. I don't know if the science checks out on this one, boss. Are these meant to be characters we like? They're just stealing from people. They're just stealing, they're not Robin Hood. We shouldn't like these characters, these are bad people. However, they may be bad, but this is a real shot. They just launched a vehicle into the side of a train. That is some GTA shit. I don't understand, you do some really cool, realistic stuff, and then all of a sudden, you, you couple it with the most unrealistic thing I've ever seen in any of these films, and that's The Rock doing cardio. Fuck off, mate. He's huge. I bet he can run five meters, and then he explodes. First, we're gonna need a chameleon, someone who can blend in. This is the exact point in the franchise where it goes from cool car, crime sort of movie, to heist movie. We're gonna need someone who's good with circuits. We're gonna need guys to punch through those walls. Someone who ain't afraid to throw down. We need a smart guy. We need a hacker guy. We need a, a blonde bombshell. We need the muscle. Goodbye James Bond with cooler cars. It's now Ocean's Eleven, The Italian Job, Mission Impossible, and Chicken Run. America, what the fuck is up with your toilets? Look at the height on the door. I can just, you could just see someone precisely crotch level, just going for a schmoo. That is insane. That is, gen that is, uh, what, if you're American, please let me know what's going on. Why the, uh, now this just looks like a scene where Vin Diesel and The Rock are just going face to face, saying something angry to each other. But give it a few seconds and you'll notice these two people are not the same height. Vin Diesel is clearly standing on a, on a wooden box. That's why there's a car hiding it. What? <sighs> now they're dragging a vault through the street. It's just getting ridiculous now, to be quite honest, and I sort of lost interest. Psych, that's what I would say if I was a massive cuck. They did this for real. That shot is just real. They dragged an actual really heavy block through the street and just let it tumble. That is really cool. It's for my 
team, you son of a bitch. We are now all witnesses to The Rock murdering a man in cold blood. He's meant to be an officer of the law and he's just executed a suspect. You can't do that, that's murder. Well, he is American, so he probably just thinks that's how they arrest people. Mm, it's, it's five past 11 and it's been over 12 hours and I'm just about to start the sixth and it's just slowly dawned on me that the run time's changed to two hour 10 and I've got four left to watch. So that's eight hours. Shit, that's a very long time. I think I'm, I feel my my eye is crying. I I think I'm enjoying it to an extent. <laughs> We're family. We got a problem, we deal with it together. What happens if I put an object up my bum and it got stuck? Should I bother family with that problem? Hmm? Are we stronger together if I bothered you with that information? I don't think we would be. I think that's a problem you should keep between you and the emergency services. So now we got cars flying in the air on some 007 type shit? This is not what we do. Tyrese is self-aware. He is self-aware of what's going on and I, I, see, eventually it breaks you down and you start to respect the film. It's annoying when you sense yourself being wrong. Oh. But I'm never wrong! You don't turn your back on family, even when they do. What about Joseph Fritzl, hmm? Would you turn, I would turn my back on him, if I'm being brutally honest. We've escalated to a fucking tank, which is, it's not actually, it's real. They did this one for real again. They souped it up from 30 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour, and they drove it through another vehicle and then down a disused highway in Spain. They're becoming the coolest people I know. And I know them because I've spent so many hours with them already. They do one cool thing and they follow it up with something that just brings you straight back down to earth. What is this? The trajectory, how he would have to be going faster and have more momentum, way more momentum than her, to fly through the air and counter her momentum and push her over and land safely on the bonnet of a car, which is, you know, the softest place to land. How did you know that there would be a car there to break our fall? I didn't. This is the first time Vin Diesel flies through the air as a CGI double, and it's not the last. I think after this point, he enjoyed this shot so much, he decides that flying is gonna be a thing for him. And that's because there's a flying headbutt from Dominic Toretto. No! There's a flying punch from The Rock. Now Vin Diesel is trapped inside this big fiery plane, which is sadly, sadly the end for Vin Diesel. No one could survive that. No one could survive. It, it doesn't matter, he just breaches out the front of the plane like a man bursting out of Moby Dick. There's four more films to go. Furious 6 is done. It is currently half one. Oh my God, I wanna go to bed so bad. Oh no, I need a remontada. This is horrific. I think they're getting better. I think they're becoming more engaging, but I might just be losing my mind and it might be the perfect combination. There is a showing of Fast X the 10th one at 10 to 11 later today. I'm gonna to try and just stay up all the way through and make that one and then just crash. But first, three more films and a couple coffees. A new Baldy has entered the fray, Mr. Jason Statham. We're up to four Baldies now, only two away from a full carton of eggs. Now it's well publicized that apparently The Rock, Jason Statham and Vin Diesel all have a contract which stipulates that none of them can like lose a fight. That's not actually true. What it is, is that they've assigned points to different punches and kicks and stuff. So no one truly comes out on top. So no one loses their like strong man image, which it sounds ridiculous, but that actually does make sense because branding is like everything. If you become like the loser, you will just 
be the lo- you'll be seen as a loser and cast as the loser. So I'm sorry, guys, but that's not that silly. Power moving. Cars are now skydiving, and people always bring this up as like, this is ridiculous. No, this is true. You can throw a car with a parachute out the back of a plane. Can you control it? No. But you can throw it out the back of a plane and land it and drive it. The army do it. Like, you, it wouldn't be as clean cut as it is in Fast and Furious. But I'm having this. This is, this is fine by my standards. I'm very quickly becoming a Fast and Furious apologist. I did not see this coming. Earlier, Vin Diesel got shot and was completely fine. Now, he drives off a cliff, rolls down it, and he's completely fine. Just put a roll cage in it, mate. Nothing to worry about there. I am no longer worried for his life. He is clearly indestructible. Nothing sadder than locking a beast in a cage. Oh my god, what a honking bit of dialogue. Time to unleash the beast. It is currently three o'clock. I am an hour and 33 into the two hours 15 of, uh, of Fast and Furious 7. I have an iced coffee. So close to just having two films left. That's all. Well, two left at home. And then I've got to go to the cinema. I'm going to fall asleep in the cinema. At this point, not a lot of information is is going into my head. I'm watching it and I'm just seeing colours and explosions. That's all. I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't care. I just, I just want it to end. I want, I want a Nissan Skyline to crash through my window right now and just take me out and put me out of my misery. Vin Diesel can just lift up cars now, can he? He is, he's becoming a superhero alarmingly quickly. They do now twice as he drives from building to building. I actually quite like this shot. I think I would do this shot because this is funny. I've changed. I've changed big time. Now the Mitchell brothers are fighting with car parts. It's like a sword fight with car parts, which is actually, that's cool. I quite like that. The Rock drives an ambulance onto a drone which explodes the missile it was about to shoot and he is completely unscathed. No way. Why is anyone in this universe worried about anything? They literally can't be hurt. The Mitchell brothers continue to scrap and then Vin Diesel, this is where he becomes a superhero. He stomps on the floor (laughs) to help the floor (laughs) to fall apart and break up and Jason Statham falls in, inevitably to his death, in the big concrete abyss because the car park crumbles and falls on top of him as he falls into the crumbling car park. He's dead. Vin Diesel then obviously drives his car into a helicopter, misses, and then dies. He's actually dead at this point. He's finally, I thought he was a superhero. He's dead at this point. Paul Walker's trying to give him medical attention. It's not working. He can't be resuscitated, probably because he hasn't died of like a heart attack or something trapped in his windpipe. It's almost definitely blunt force trauma to the head, mate. I don't think a couple (gasps) will do it. If you die, I die. I remember it all. It's about time. Yes, that's right. Medical attention didn't work. But love, love and family, that's what resuscitated him. If you're a doctor, just don't bother learning it. There's no use. And that's where this film ends. It doesn't. Jason Statham's not dead. He's still alive. So how I've literally watched him fall into a concrete crevice and be crushed. (laughs) So far, there's very little reason to believe anyone can die. Gal Gadot bounced down the tarmac earlier in this one. I'm pretty sure she's going to come back. I don't know how, but she will just rock up and they won't tell you how or it'll be like, oh, I actually landed in a ball pit and I was fine. Uh, I've just finished the uh, seventh installment in the beautiful franchise. And um, it's, it was, you know, the iconic. And I'll see you again. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, not gonna lie, I actually got some goosebumps there because that is actually a very sad moment because it's real isn't it um so that's depressing isn't it that is quite sad I'm trying to think of all the jokes i've made about that in the past
But the game is the game. That is the, that is the motto. The game is the game. When I go, if it is in, a, in an odd way, you're allowed to make jokes. I reckon I'm going to be murdered by Clifford the Big Red Dog. Two more, two more, two more, two more, two more. Bear with me on this one, because this is where the franchise completely loses it. This one begins with The Rock doing his Moana shit with his daughter's football team. If I was Vin Diesel at this point, I would have fell out with him as well. Waiting a long time for this! Keep waiting, bitch. The Rock has just stabbed someone directly in the heart. That isn't very Moana of him. There's now cars suicidally launching themselves out of buildings as if they've been working in the Chinese iPhone factory. Vin Diesel has just murdered Jason Statham in the street. He shot him. He's dead. He won't be dead. He definitely won't be dead. Once you join the Fast and Furious series, you're locked in for life. Even if you actually die in real life. Vin Diesel infiltrates a Russian naval base. Charlie's Theron is controlling a nuclear submarine with an iPad. And Ludacris is driving a tank. Okay. The Rock skates along and pushes a torpedo into another vehicle. The submarine breaches the ice and then just immediately goes back down again. That's not how submarines work. And I would know. I've actually been in a submarine. I went in a submarine in Tenerife. That is not very Kieran Carlin of me. Vin Diesel is engulfed in flames, jumps from his rolling car and to shield himself from an exploding nuclear submarine, he puts up his forearm. That'll work, mate. It did, obviously. Well, 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 well. The the sleep deprivation is <laughs> it's, it's it's not having any effect to me whatsoever. I'm actually now in the past five minutes for the brief spell. I've had a little break for fifteen minutes. I'm suddenly excited to find out what happens in F nine. I'm excited. I want to find out how the saga of Dominic Toretto continues. <sighs> oh my god. It's John Cena! At least he's not bold. That's a nice change to casting. How would the car have any traction? You can't, you need something to push against. John Cena's car gets picked up by a plane mid-air via a magnet into the belly of the plane. Vin Diesel strategically does a rope swing with a vehicle. And is obviously absolutely fine at the end of it. One more, one more film. One more, one more after this. But I want to kill myself. But even if I did, I'm, an inv I'm invincible. And it wouldn't work. I'd come back two films later. I've got 40 minutes left of F9 or F9 the Fast Saga or Fast 9. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, I am falling asleep, sitting upright. Dominic Toretto has just fallen a great distance into some water. And is he dead? He's not dead. He looks like he's dead, but he's not dead, is he? I just know he's not dead. He's quite simply not dead. Please just die, mate. Just die, end it. Don't make me go to the cinema and watch Fast 10. I'm just falling asleep. Despite the rope swing in the plane, the most unbelievable thing in this film is the idea that Charlie's Theron has gone to a barber's and asked for that trim. The boys from Tokyo Drift are back and that guy does not look a day over 18 still. They're now rocket scientists in Germany. 
obviously. Cardi B shows up as a fake Interpol officer, which at this point, I don't know how unreasonable that is in this universe. I mean, oh, fucking put Frodo Baggins as head of state. I don't care at this point, it's I, nothing. Nothing can affect me. I have reached the bottom of my mind. Now this next sequence includes some of my favorite things to point out during films, and that is spotting people's 3D digital doubles. Look at Vin Diesel on this roof. What in the PlayStation 2 is that? That doesn't seem that dangerous of a stunt. Could they not find a bold guy to just run along in a white t-shirt? Look at them. How did this make it in? This, this is, is this as obvious to everyone else as it is to me? I find it absolutely hilarious. I know why they do it and I understand it, but it doesn't make it feel any less funny to me. Please let me know if I'm a big fat nerd or if you notice it immediately as well. This is the fucking space bit. Ludacris and Tyrese are in space. Is this what we wanted? Are we all happy with how this has turned out? They're in fucking space. How would they get down? I don't even know how actual people get down from space. What's after space at this point? Is Ludacris going to be fucking shot through the Hadron Collider into smithereens and turn up in another universe where everyone's Lego? Right, I've paused it here. In this shot, we have three characters. Guess how many are digital doubles? That's right, it's all free. Let's focus on the guy on top of the truck because it's just a really funny animation. He does like a little cheer, like a yippee. <laughs> Our favorite indestructible man, Vin Diesel, rolls down the hill, gets hold of the steering wheel, manages to wrangle that beast back into submission, takes two direct missile hits. The truck flies into Charlie Theron's plane and she explodes and dies. She's finally dead. You can't survive that. You're in the air anyway. If you fell out at that speed, you'd die. She is dead. Oh, it was a drone, was it? And she was never in the plane the entire time. So she's alive. Brilliant. Really good use of my life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let there be light. Oh my Lord. I've done all nine. I've done nine. I am concerned about my health. My head fell a bit. Am I either going to have a nap or I'm going to have a shower and another coffee and see if I can survive till half 12. But that would be a long time to be awake. And I am deeply concerned for my well being. Jesus fucking. I've never been awake this long before. But I'm, I'm currently right now, it's been a very solo journey, which is the direct opposite of family. One more film, 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 one more film. But Dominic Toretto wouldn't have a nap. He lives his life one quarter mile at a time. Still don't really know what that means. I got out the house, I got a move on, I bought the human equivalent of NOS, I bumped into a cat with a Hitler moustache, I petted the feline Führer, I purchased my ticket 16 quid, jeezy peeps. The theatre was absolutely packed to see the best franchise ever made, and I was just 2 hours and 10 minutes away from completing my journey. 10 Fast and Furious films, 30 hours awake, 23.5 hours of Fast and Furious watched, and I can finally answer this question, the true reason for Fast and Furious's success. The films are bad funny, but I used to hate them. I used to just think they're ridiculous. I used to disregard them and I would not give them my money. But I am a convert. I have changed. I'm a changed man. I can see value in all the silly little CGI things. I love CGI and I even love it now if it's rubbish. They constantly shoot themselves in the foot by following up really cool hard stunt work with the uncool unbending of reality. But Vin Diesel, if you're watching right now, if I could change one thing about your series, just one thing, please, please let someone die. Gal Gadot bounced down the tarmac earlier in this one. I'm pretty sure she's gonna come back. I don't know how, but she will just rock up. 